So today we are going to the Abel Tasman National Park on an eco tour with Abel Tasman Eco Tours. This morning we are leaving the Bound Backpackers really early because we have a meeting with the team from Abel Tasman Eco Tours. If you remember, we've done a tour with them a few days ago, but they told us that they had a tour around the inlet and base of the Abel Tasman National Park and we couldn't resist to join them again for another day out. After putting the boat in the water, we are quickly making our way to the first pit stop of this tour, which is gonna be Split Apple Rock. It's probably the most iconic stop in the Abel Tasman National Park. Everybody gets a picture with it. And surrounding Split Apple Rock, there is quite a few unique rock formations as well as shag colonies. As we find out with Stu, who is our guide on the Abel Tasman Eco Tours, Split Apple Rock isn't just a rock that looks like a split apple. It actually has a whole little ecosystem on there full of marine wildlife. And he also explains to us why the rock is shaped the way it is. Not only that, but the Abel Tasman National Park is also dotted with loads of little islands which are a haven for wildlife here. Stu has a background in marine biology and he really knows so much about the wildlife here in the Abel Tasman National Park. We stop at several shag colonies along the way and we learn so much about them and so many fascinating facts such as did you know that shags can swallow rocks to make them dive deeper in the water? It's so fascinating! Next up is Te Pukitia Bay. This is where we're going to be hopping off the boat and going on a small trek where Stu will be able to tell us even more about the Abel Tasman National Park. So after unboarding the boat and obviously getting our feet wet, we are all taking some time to relax on the sand while Stu is giving us some hot drinks and cakes just as a nice morning stack before the walk. This bay is the prime example on how amazing Abel Tasman National Park looks. It's golden sand beaches with a backdrop of thick rainforest. I love it. So Stu is going to take us on a little walk around and we are going in inside the thick bush where he's telling us more about the native plants. Well, it's got a chemical in there that's the precursor to MDMA. If you ever try that. So this is the reason why Laura and I are going to eat that. We'll see if we're going to have, um, have a time. Really, really boring walk up than that. So that's why I get you to it's eat it. Spicy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can oh. make um, pesto with it. Makes a good pesto. You can put it in salads. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> carry on. Why well, am I always eating the one that is disgusting? So it turns out that the MDMA full Kawakawa plant is not really tasty and Laura and I really are not big fans of it. Stu tells us later, obviously after we eat it, that it's usually drank as a tea which probably makes it much more bearable. Going on on our way, Stu is also showing us some high-tech possum traps which help them control the pests in the Abel Tasman National Park and making sure that the wildlife is well preserved. Stu also shows us some Manuka and Kanuka, which are the main trees that grow in this section of the Abel Tasman National Park. And then we continue making our way up to an absolutely stunning viewpoint, which has amazing views of the surrounding beaches and forests of the Abel Tasman National Park. This viewpoint is known as Speedhead and overlooks a couple of stunning inlets. They are turquoise water bathed in golden sand beaches. It's perfect. On the way down, we are getting warmer and warmer and our merino wood layers, supposed to keeping us in check in case of the weather changing all the time, are just not doing a good job right now. They are cooking us. 
After jumping on the boat and landing on another beautiful beach, we are sitting down to tuck into some lunch and just sort of take in the amazing views around us. Stu is showing us some fascinating little marine creatures like shrimp and starfish and different shells as well. It's amazing how he just picks up something straight away from the ocean and knows exactly what it is. And now we are jumping back on the boat once again to make our way back towards Marahau. And on the way back we do spot a few little blue penguins but unfortunately they are too quick, too small for us to even attempt to film them. Although little blue penguins are more prominent in other parts of the South Island of New Zealand, Stu is explaining us that there are a few colonies around the Abel Tasman National Park which are actually currently breeding. This is fascinating, the amount of wildlife that we got to see in such a short tour. Tomorrow we're going to do something a bit more traditional on the Abel Tasman National Park. We're going to take the water taxi and we are going to go sea kayaking and then a bit of hiking. It's really the traditional backpacker activity um, in the Abel Tasman National Park and it's something which is long overdue because we've been spending so much time around this park. It's time to get in, 